Last night we covered the top 5 PDFs in League of Legends and one of them was my boy Panzer Dragon. So the question is, what is the full story what happened to him? So let's check out another video from Hazmat called The Degenerate Downfall of Panzer Dragon. Based on the fact that the likes to dislike ratio is kinda disgusting, one can imagine it's either Dragon's fans are disliking this video or, or, or this video is biased, I guess we'll find out. There's a famous quote that says you either die as a hero or you live long enough to see yourself become the villain, which can be aptly applied to Panzer Dragon. He went from being one of the biggest League of Legends YouTubers to falling down in a degenerative pitfall, but... <laughs> Just loved seeing the fucking PDF file in every thumbnail. But yeah, Bans, he was one of the largest ones, he was literally the number one challenger in NA. And my boy was one of the first content creators of League of Legends on YouTube, so you know. First came, first served. Now, what, what, what's the definition I'm looking for? The Basically, where you are getting the opportunity in the market because you, you are the first one to enter the market. Shit, I forgot that business page in here, by the way. Anyway. But how did it all come to be? The origins of Panzer Dragon can be traced back to season 1 where he started as a gold player. What's also interesting is that his name, Panzer Dragon, is a name given to him by Riot Games. In 2012, Panzer Dragon posted on Reddit asking why Riot gave him this nickname after his previous name was Chess Dragon. <laughs> okay, the portion no. I mean, I need... To change my name from Clem Fandango to Jizz Fandango. The reason as to why he got name changed seems to be the usage of the word Jizz not being cool in Riot's eyes. Regardless, Panzer Dragon continued to play League and got Diamond in Season 2, and in Season 3 he for the first time reached Challenger Temporary. Keep in mind that in Season 1 and Season 2 we didn't have any ranks. What we had was MMR system. We had the ELO system, which was represented by numbers. So you didn't know if you are bronze, if you are gold, if you are diamond. All you knew was your number. Straight up, idea is taken from the chess. Temporarily, and it wasn't until in Season 4 where he managed to hit top 50 of the NA ranked ladder. Moreover, Panzer Dragon had just started his YouTube channel almost two decades ago, back in 2000. But I mean, let's be real, majority of the audience wasn't even born back then. Anyway. Season 6, where he posted mostly random videos that were about his life or interests such as him playing Dance Dance Revolution Supernova or a skit for a Carbo's commercial. A couple years later... When did you start Shifu? You mean when did my life start or when did I start playing League? Because I started playing League in Season 3, which was undoubtedly, unquestionably the best season in the entire history of League of Legends. YouTube, uh, two years ago? Three years ago maybe? But I mean this channel. Pan started to post League of Legends related content such as compilation videos of the Season 2 World Championship, short and quick funny videos, and memes. But in 2013, at the same time when he managed to reach Challenger, he started to post more regularly like stream highlights and educational content in the form of 4 minute Challenger guides of certain champions. And that is Giga Chat, because at the end of the day, when you are entering the new market of content creation, what you want to do is either information, education, or entertainment. This? falls into two categories, so fans knew what he was doing. The form of 4 minute challenger guides of certain champions. If you'd like to support the content and the research I do, consider buying very cheap RP, cheap battle passes, and or orbs, you can- How? How? What, what do you mean minus 12 key? Hold up. What are the prices in here? Give me a second. For the content and the research I do, consider buying very cheap- Uh, mystery skin for $3. X-Tech chest plus key for conversion rate, maybe $10. Yeah, I'm not sure about that. Cheap RP, cheap battle passes, and or orbs. You could also just smash the fucking subscribe button. Otherwise, links are in the comments and the description. Get key sheep for you. It's like, I need a key or two chat. Like, perhaps... Perhaps I may need a key or two, just saying. Anyway. Pants would start to get views on his videos quite rapidly, gaining a few thousand subscribers. He ramped up his content and would... First mover's advantage. That's the term I was looking for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In business, it's called the first mover's advantage. Which means if you are moving into a certain niche, into a certain market, while well, you are the first one, you are taking the entire market for yourself. So technically, you are establishing a name. And as far as I'm concerned, back in the day, Pants was literally at the top. At the very top of the ladder. And people wanted to learn how to play this game slightly better. You know, how to improve. And as far as I'm concerned, he was only one of the few channels who was doing the educational guides on how to become better continue to double down on competitive ranked content. Pants also had a vested interest in joining the esports side of League of Legends, such as playing in the 2014 NA Challenger series, which was a direct bridge into the LCS basically. Unfortunately, he saw no success during this time. Pants continued to- Well, I mean that's LCS we're talking about. 
you know? Anyway. To stream and provide content, growing his channel to over 600,000 subscribers in 2017, having doubled his 300,000 subscribers from the previous year. However, 2017 also brought its own set of drama, with accusations of racism. I shouldn't listen to that f***ing nigg call. Hold up. Hold up, this looks like I'm saying that. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Oh. Of drama, with accusations of racism. I shouldn't listen to that f***ing nigg call. I mean, uh, it's called, uh, it's called the uh, PewDiePie bridge incident. After the incident, a Reddit thread was made about him saying the racial slur. He then saw this and on his stream asked his fans to download the thread in an effort to suppress it. A later clip surfaced of him saying, <laughs> to fucking suppress it, my guy went full 1984. <laughs> that he was proud of uttering the slur. Eh, I said it. Am I proud of it? Eh, just a little bit. Fuck yeah, let's go bud. He finally apologized <laughs> But I mean, at the end of the day, when it comes down to streamers saying the end word, it is what it is. Sometimes it slips out, you know? We had Pokemon, we had PewDiePie, we had Panzer Jack, and we had numerous other streamers doing that. And then we have uh, literally one of the largest streamers right now, Kai Sanash. I swear to God, if he's streaming right now, if he's actually streaming right now, you, you go to his stream. And play a game I like to call Take a Shot every single time Kai says the N word. You know? How soon the bottle will be empty? My money under five minutes. Okay, nigga! Nigga, 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 nigga! I'm a 100% nigga! After the thread got traction where he stated, There's nothing I can say about this. I was completely frustrated in that clip, so I said the n-word out of super frustration. As for me saying I was proud of it, I was trolling on my stream with my viewers. I didn't really think it would be taken out of context. I don't expect a lot of people to understand my personality since it's literally no filter. I apologize if this offended. If it's no filter, why do you apologize? I mean, stick to the character. Anyone. This so-called apology didn't sit well with many as he essentially was apologizing for people being offended by him using the slur, rather than apologizing since he knows using the word in a public forum is wrong. He blamed people for getting offended at his no-filter troll persona, which was a prompt excuse for being a douchebag. More clips, however, did surface on the Reddit thread, accusing him of saying the racial slur multiple times and frequently, but they eventually got deleted and the clippers got permanently banned from his Twitch channel. Moreover, Panzer Dragon was also accused of copyright striking other videos of him saying the racial slur. Another popular clip of Ima Cutipine surfaced a few days later where he asked Panzer Dragon to spell engineer. <laughs> Hold up, I need to see that chat. I'll remove you for a second. Panzer Dragon looked away. <laughs> That's not how you spell it, but I think. <laughs> Where is it? Yeah, there it is. From this, but still, this incident was ingrained in people's mind when thinking of Panzer Dragon. But this incident had no say for his YouTube community, as people still enjoyed his content as it continued to steadily grow both in views and subscribers. As previously mentioned, Pants wanted to delve into the esports side of things. In 2017, this was his chance as the NA Challenger series was coming up. It was the second event in NA where it gives non LCS players the opportunity to prove themselves to franchise organizations to help find new talent in the North American circuit. Unfortunately for Pants, he was denied and he later reflected in a video posted a few months after the n-word drama titled I got denied to scouting grounds. I think you guys know but I was the number one seed to go to scouting grounds um and yeah I was definitely looking really forward to it. Hold on show me the other ones. Uh charisma I was in there interesting I'm blabberfish hey the more you know the more you know. But I mean, at the end, when it comes down to the esports, their HR department is absolutely disgusting and nothing will fly. What is she for there? Oh, I was already in, in, the, in the list. I, I didn't need to participate in that. They already instantly invited me, you know? Um, and yeah, I was definitely looking really forward to it. Unfortunately, uh, I got denied because I said a bad word a few months ago. And obviously that's my fault it's it's so stupid of me to say it in the first place yeah that's that's called digital footprint i mean this is the reason why dantas will never be able to get a proper job and by saying proper job i mean nine to five doesn't matter what field marketing banking fucking customer support doesn't matter 
Unless someone will develop a technology where you're straight up deleting every single footprint or fingerprint of your presence and on the internet. Then maybe there is a shot. What about Kesha then? Kesha is unhinged. He's a straight up a fucking psychopath. And as far as I'm concerned, he is the marketing. He is the marketing. That's the reason he, he got invited to G2. You know? He seems... Plus! Plus! Kesha is not suggesting making... Romantic advancements towards the species of Yordles in League of Legends. In very descriptive ways. You know, what, what he does is yes, he windows. Nothing wrong with windows. To genuinely have some sort of remorse for the drama, but Reddit again reacted to this, remembering the incident of him maliciously attempting to suppress evidence, was nonchalant about even saying it, trolling about the usage of the slur, but only when attention was brought to the issue, he decided to apologize half acidly. His content. DR silencing Dantes for speaking the truth. I mean, he's a brand risk and he knows it. That's why Dante stands out. If you want to be an anomaly, if you want to stand out, you have to be an anomaly. That's what Dantes is doing. He's saying a big fat fuck you to the advertisers who are playing it family friendly and he's playing by his own rules. Sure, he's missing out on millions. And when I say millions, I mean fucking millions of ad revenue in sponsorships, but fuck it, you know? If he would be accepting them, he would be like everyone else. And we'll watch Dantes because he's Dantes. Because he's straight up a fucking psychopath and we love that. But it was still great, inventive and creative to say the least, providing fun challenges and even competitive ones that were compelling for an audience to watch. The 2016 to 2017 years would have a lot of viral videos being published, such as him facing Faker, playing a champion for 24 hours, or spectating Bronze Fives. His <laughs> and this is what we do for a living right now. I mean, instead of spectating, we're actively participating in it. Anyway, sometimes it is what it is. The content was just different and more interesting than the usual highlights videos that we see nowadays. In June 2016, however, his most popular series would start. The Challenger to Rank 1 series was a popular series where Pants documented his own climb in an effort to reach Rank 1 in NA. The series has over 800 videos and took several years to complete. In fact, until December 24th, 2018, he managed to reach Rank 1. This was also during the Season 9. 800 videos. Full scale gameplays of him actually sweating and trying. Bro, I'm getting cancer after one or two games in League, but I'm actually trying. Fucking 800. No, 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 miss me with that. In preseason, no less, which commonly attributes rank achievements done in this period to be void or of lesser importance. However, there would be also some accusations of win trading against Panzer Dragon, although it wasn't directly related to his recent rank climb. In the same year, League community members mentioned how Panzer Dragon had a win trading arc with another League player named Fi. Oh, that's right! I forgot about Panzer Dragon and Fui with trading arc. Oh my god, I had so many videos on my other computer and like, that wasn't, that wasn't 2018 and like all this other shit of these two windows. Bro, I forgot, dude, there's been so much fucked up stuff going on. I forgot about how bad wind trading was even when I was in New York. Wait, it's always been this bad. Not, not like stream snipe me and do it bad, but it's always been bad. They do not. And keep in mind, he's talking about the situation a few years ago where wind trading was only seen in the streamer in the content creation scene. Now, bro, I'm pretty sure it was fucking Brazil League, Brazil Pro League, where straight up one of the teams had a Jace who actually, unironically, on live stream in front of thousands, and I mean thousands of viewers who are watching the pro scene, went fucking trading. Shamelessly. I mean, his performance in that one clip was straight up worse that we see here in iron so you know when trading has evolved a little bit not here no way yeah, yeah, no, no fucking joke no fucking joke uh lol jace when uh, trade probably this is the one hold on where is jace uh, i don't see jace hold on ah there we go wolf odin where is wolf odin odin is here yeah pay attention hold on we see Jace casually chilling in here, yeah? I feel like that's the clip. No, sure he missed. Not using a single ability. Watching his teammates die. Just doing exactly what. My guy was just casually chilling. I feel like we have, we have more clips. My guy casually refuses to hit the inhibitor. Okay, I want to see that. 
samodzielnie ratuje w tym momencie rozgrywkę i obawiam się, że Mikołaju to nawet może być za niedługo koniec rozgrywki. Nie ma dostępnych paczek dla Korkiego. Aha, that's one auto, tak? Jest oczywiście dalej przy życiu Jiller, jak i również Desoliny, ale to jest naprawdę duża dawka obrażeń, które Ironus będzie mogła sadzić. Zobacz, oni to w tym momencie nie. mogą zajdować skończyć. Chociaż Bro. chwila. No właśnie, bez tego szeroko. Ja o, to... ty... <laughs> Fucking pro scene, by the way. Anyway, as I was saying, when trading has evolved a little bit, you know? Here, man! Holy sh**! Ay, ay, ay! I'm yep. all about that dumb shit. In another case, I will dominate Lashed out to Panzer Dragon, saying he is a disgusting win trading slash ghosting animal that needs to be punished, continuing to say that he was caught in both mine and TF Blade chant while playing versus us. Panzer Dragon responded to this, of course, by saying that he always has people's streams up simply because he is bored when waiting in queue. Apparently, I knew where he was, whatever, and then two, I'm in their chats. But as you guys know, I like to watch streams while in queue. I'm bored as shit. What else am I supposed to do? Also, also, I mean, I'm not pointing fingers in here, but bro, if you were streaming, if you're playing in the high elo, where games are crucial, where it's very important because you want to be the number one, you want to be the challenger, you actually want to win. And you're putting yourself at a disadvantage by live streaming your fucking gameplay to the public? Bro, I don't know, I don't know. How about you put a three minute delay? How about you cover a minimap? You know? I mean, there are ways of helping yourself out. Watch YouTube videos. Panzer Dragon also achieved rank 1 in 2020 while this season was ongoing, finally getting it for real this time. But still, win trading accusations would pop up, and as well as people accusing him of being boosted or assisted by doing with Viper, which he did give a special thanks to. Nevertheless, questions would arise whether his rank 1 climb truly was legit. Honestly, got a good point, they are asking to be snapped. Exactly, and we're talking about at the top of the very top. Bro, if I'm playing on the enemy team and I know that my opponent is streaming right now, bro, you're just straight up giving me the advantage that I don't need, but bro, I will definitely use it. Because again, we're going back to the argument that we're at the top echelon of the fucking ladder. So brother, I'll be using every single advantage I have. And you are just giving me this advantage of just casually revealing your locations, your plays, your wards, your maps, your everything? Bro. You know, I'll, I'll take that. I'll take that. Yet, if win trading was involved. Panzer Dragon also has a change in his content at this point, going from the competitive educational content to a more clickbait style type of videos that involved smurfing and trying. Ah, the classic out absurd builds on specific champions. This somewhat alienated his audience who was there for the high elo gameplay and educational content rather than the entertainment type of content. The onset of laziness, that's like how this chapter is called. The reason is um, even though his viewership is straight up diminished 10 times, but the one difference that I can tell you is the length of these videos. The longer the video, the more money you earn. And they don't mean it like, oh, you earn twice amount of money. You don't get three times more money. No, brother, it's at least five times. You know, at least fucking five times. Especially when videos are long, like fucking one hour. And you don't need, on oh, no, you don't need hundreds of thousands of views. What you need to do is get around 10,000 views every single day. And you can make a decent living. You know, your bills will be covered. You'll bring food on the table. And you'll have a bit of cash left. Not much, sure, but still. Still. Plus, this content is literally the easiest. Treat up the easiest content. Well, no. Okay, I, I take it back. There is one category of content that's easier than reacting or spectating. And that is uh, full-scale AI content. What, what, what was the content creator? Uh, Quibble Pops? Who straight up created full-scale AI YouTube channel. Where instead of him, like me in the corner right now, he created an AI avatar. His entire video was scripted by AI. His voice was replicated by AI. Strip every single thing was turned into AI. So technically, and you know, you can pump out 20 videos a day. And that shit was targeted towards children. And children, you know, uh, they, they, they don't really care about what to watch, you just watch and that's it. Simple as that. Didn't he cancel that project after months? Uh, no, last time I checked, which was maybe, maybe a few months ago, he was doubling down on it. But the problem with that content, the AI content, is that we're talking about YouTube. It straight up removes the you part in the word YouTube. 
So you're you're making that shit into AI tube, you know? Business idea: create a website, replicating YouTube, call it AI tube, and get somehow advertisers to advertise in there. How about that? And you make money out of it. Ah, oh, genius. Involved smurfing and trying out absurd builds on specific champions. This somewhat alienated his audience, who was there for the high elo gameplay and educational content rather than the entertainment type of content. This had its own success. YouTube will see you though. Not if I'm in China. <laughs> I am unreachable in China. <laughs> Bro, I can feel how my social credit score is just increasing right now. I can feel the numbers. Yeah, guys, we're going to China. Success, of course, as his clickbait, but over time his content would would stagnate. It would become boring, re-uploaded once from his stream with minimal editing, reaction and the content which bore almost no reaction in the videos themselves. Which makes you wonder if they're outright a copyright violation. There was no- Oh uh, yeah, that, that, that's, that's the issue with the copyright violations is because the fucking DMCA Digital Millennium Copyright Act was written by boomers in the late 20th century and we're talking about 1990s, 1980s. So the idea of content being like this, like we have today, didn't exist. So in the fucking laws it is written that it has to be at least somewhat transformative. So you can just slap your face on top of it. Do no reactions and technically, technically you can win in the fucking court. If you're being sued, you know? No creativity, no inventive take on his content anymore, and it showed. Most of his recent videos barely reached 10,000 views for a big content creator with over 800,000 subs, and his personality was cold, abrasive, and had no interesting quality to it, which made almost nothing left to be desired. The final nail to the coffin, though, was PDF allegations brought for- <laughs> A fucking classic. <laughs> if you want to commit Sudoku on your online career? Just become a PDF, that's it. Forward by an NSFW Twitter account. As Panzer Dragon was a part of the League Partner Program, he had skin- Uh, yeah, League of Legends Partner Program is a fucking disgusting uh, scam, not gonna lie. I mean, it's exclusive, been a thing that League content creators wanted to reach, uh, 10 years ago, give or take. But they closed it down 8 years ago, but this, it still exists, mind you. And the content creators, who aren't playing League for the past 8 years, still are in this program. <coughs> Pokemon, <coughs> anyway. Gift codes given out via giveaways. One of these accounts went to a girl by the nickname of Lindsay. She was 18 by the time they talked and their interaction quickly developed into being a conversation, although Pans showed this interest and responded to Lindsay in an NPC way by giving- Okay, here we go chat. Ah, thanks, I like your profile picture. It's funny, when I found your Twitter, I first thought it was a random because of it. Bing shilling. It's like, that, this is the second sign of uh, China chat. It's like, it's a sign. Coincidence? I think not. And then my guy just casually, haha, thank you, you got more pictures. I mean, not fucking around, not beating around the bush. He goes in, straight up goes, he's not wasting any time, he knows what's up. Giving one-liners and the driest text possible. Lindsay tweeted out her experience with Panzer Dragon in February 2024 and revealed miscon- She would receive the new video that Pants uploaded might be bait though. How did he got baited? Yeah, I mean, I, I've, I've, I've skimmed through it, but because my guy uploaded a video which is a fucking response to allegations of one hour plus? Bro, that video is fucking around one hour. I ain't got time for that. Plus, what the fuck are you doing for one hour? Bro, just simple pr provide proof. Three minutes maximum. That's it. You're innocent. He uploaded a new video about quitting. Quitting what? I cannot make this shit up. Panzer Dragon. Panzer Dragon. Allegations. Drama. And word exposed. Rank 1. Response. Uh, yeah, Picasso. When? The search engine optimization gives you these results. You need to reconsider something. Farewell. And that is a three minute video. Hold on. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll check it. We'll check it after after this. Conduct in her 44 page Google Docs doc. Ah, 45. Yeah, so it was Cookie who had 90. Sometimes, sometimes I think that these guys are making a challenge between themselves who can come up with a document that has more pages, the most pages, you know? It's like they have a bet on the sideline trying to come out on top with the most pages so far number one we have a cookie as far as i'm concerned he's nine at 90. document which received over three point only 44 just rookie numbers true true i mean brother if, if you don't have at least 60 pages of uh, p 
PD of accusations. Uh, you know, you no, no jail for you. All good, all good. It's just, just a slap on the wrist. Maybe, maybe even nothing, you know? 1.1 million views. In her statement, she revealed how Panzer Dragon asked and wanted explicit images of Lindsay when she was underage. It's four years old, so give me it. I like Yeah, 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 that's the situation that we talked about yesterday. My guy got absolutely jibated. At the time of this conversation, keep in mind, that girl is... Uh... 18, 19, so she is of legal age when they are having this conversation, but that's the fucking bait in here. It's four years old, which means the girl has spicy pictures of herself from when she was 15 or 14. Now my question is, what the fuck is wrong with you? I know children are fucking stupid. I was stupid, I'm still stupid, but bro, not to this extent. What at 14, 15 having news, you know? Fuck me, bro. It. I have just two old ones, probably like the same time-ish as that previous picture, like four years ago. Pants then confirms once again that she should show- Are you underage, Shifu? Broski, I was here at the dawn of time. I'm straight up ancient. Uh, this doesn't help me morally. Anyway, it's like, I still believe in the fact that I'm immortal. ...him them even though they are 45 years old. Yes, I wanna see. The pictures she sent were explicit images of something she found from Reddit that was of age and not actually her. She was same age as Zoe. No, 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 no. Zoe is a child to me. Not because that she looks like a child, it's because I'm fucking older. Anyway. Her. Nevertheless, Panzer Dragon still... Sh you, you know how some people believe that... Humans coexisted with dinosaurs. Well, I mean, I am a living proof of that. Chat, we were chilling with my boy T-Rex and some other t dinosaurs. Sadly, sadly, they, they, they got wiped out by a fucking Malphite ultimate. Anyway. ...showed PDF tendencies through this particular interaction. The League community reacted to this with personalities like Hums, Druted, and Nail shaming such behavior. While the reactions to the Google Docs were developing, Panzer Dragon streamed where he mocked and made fun of the situation. For example, he vent any bot running it down but playing into the PDF meme that is so rampant within the League community, joking whether he should go the Predator rune or not. He also... I mean, what do you mean joking? You did that junk, you just simply... Big Jacks? Go Predator, make a video out of it, and it's going to be one of your most popular videos. Or, unironically, that's what I did. Shit. I'm considering of actually becoming a Jax Payne. In game. I know a Jax that did the Predator thing. Uh, yeah, yeah, and he's tagging me. Of course he's tagging me. <laughs> she shortly responded to the allegations by saying that it was all fake, photoshopped, and that she was of age. Really she for exposed. What do you mean she for exposed? I fucking exposed myself. Like, broski, hold on, give me a second. We straight up go to my YouTube channel. You're literally a few clicks away. It's like, scroll down to the shorts. These are the newest shorts. One click to the right. Half a million views, by the way. Hi, Zoe. Do you want free candy? No. It's like, I am a man on a mission. Stop! And I'm done. Hiya. Try hard. You know what else is hard? I didn't care anymore. What fat? Reported. Child. What is the child? I've got free candy that it is. Leave me alone. Child. Get the f off, you ape. Help me. I mean. <laughs> You don't need to win the game when you've already won my heart. Zoe, wanna be my Discord kitten? What the f? Make it! Deserved. Anyway, you don't need to go far. I'm just saying, chat. I don't give a f. It's like, it doesn't do anything. Oh, whatever. I don't really give a f. Look, she's over the age. That's all I'm gonna say. Don't be a retard. That's all I'm gonna say. You guys. And I mean. He is right. In this situation, when he was uh, having a conversation with that raised jail baiting girl, she is of the age. She's over 18, it's all good. Although, although, I know I suck at math, but maybe, maybe Pants also sucks at math. Because he didn't pay attention to the idea of where she su suggested, well, not suggested, explicitly said that, yeah, I have spicy pictures, but they are from, you know, 40 years ago. So there is that. Guys are just complete parts. No, the allegations aren't true. You guys are so fing stupid. Like literally, some of it are photoshopped, and it's crazy. Like literally, some of it are photoshopped, and it's crazy. Look, I'm just gonna say, whatever is like it's photoshopped. Like what it like? Okay, that's it. 
I want you to say it's Photoshop, okay? Yeah, also one thing of uh, stuff being Photoshop, bro, we live in digital era and an amazing world of technology where AI is overtaking everything. And I mean, we're talking about the creative fields, we're talking about pictures, we're talking about audio, we're talking about everything else. Shit, give it another year or two, this AI will take the content creation to the next level. Just saying. And imagine what someone can do with malicious intents. Because for AI, what you need is have an input. So chat, for example, I have a voice recording of my own voice for two minutes. I'm adding it to the AI and I'm typing in Spanish. AI will make it so I'm speaking Spanish fucking fluently. Now, change the subject to video. We're moving from audio to video. Also, give AI a bit of an input, yeah? So, for example, take my stream for now. Take anyone's stream. Fucking XQC stream. He streamed like fucking 50 hours a day. You'll have every single reaction, every single muscle in his face move with that input. And uh, then you just type in the prompt in the AI saying, uh, XQC stealing a car and uh, driving over the bridge and uh, Michael Bay explosions and Transformers attacking him while the moon is falling down. That shit straight up will happen. Ideally. Perfectly. And no one will will bat an eye. Like shit bro, even a few years ago I remember I saw a popular clip. Somewhere on the internet there was a clip where there was a family gathering and uh, grandchildren showed a clip of news report from GTA with the dub that uh, there was a car accident and the fucking video showed straight up the clip of a GTA car driving and smacking people. Uh, there's a big explosion of fucking classic GTA shenanigans, yeah? Yeah, he's skipping through traffic. Oh my gosh! Oh, yeah, do you, pushed... do you see the stadium right there? That's the BYU stadium. Oh my gosh! He pushed those two cars clear out of the... What is he... Oh. He also goes in the trench, too. Oh my gosh! They have a, you know, like a drone? Yeah. They're following him with a drone. Whoa! Oh my gosh! Grandma? Straight up believed it because she's not familiar with the technology. We, millennials, zoomers, the younger generation, yeah, we're kind of familiar with the technology. We know what, what can happen. But dog, give it another couple of years? Shit, it'll be indis indistinguishable. That's the word I'm looking for. You know? Shit is kind of scary, not gonna lie. Now we'll say she's over the age, okay? She's over the age. Pence then attempted to make a more coherent response by releasing a video. This video mainly went over how she didn't show everything, which showcased how she was obsessed over him and always attempting to get his attention. But this was nothing new, as the community already thought that this woman was mentally ill and her image wasn't looking good either. Many being surprised that she released the Google Docs in the first place. His response, however... What do you mean surprised? Attention seekers gonna attention seek to the asking for underage explicit pictures didn't make any sense whatsoever. He somehow perceived her to be 22 years old, which conveniently would put her at 18. She called you hot, so you assume she is 22 or 18 or 19, whatever. I mean, I mean... If, given your previous experience in life, the only people calling you hot were over the age, so of course, naturally, you would assume instantly that she is over 18. But in the convo... At the time of having this conversation, she is over 18. Checks out. 18 years old. She who called you hot. No one. Because I'm a Timo main. Hashtag deserved. If <laughs> four years had passed, making the explicit images okay to send. Here's the thing. Okay, here, here, here it is. So she's leaving this big thing out. Recall now. Or we all did. Not even mom. Ah, uh, bro. What, 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 what do you mean, not even mom? If your mom calls you hot. Steel, you gotta be asking the questions, uh, you know? But if my friend's mom calls me hot, then, then it's okay. But if my mom calls me hot, you know, I, I, I draw the line here. Unless you don't respond in 30 seconds, I'm calling someone else. So sorry, but I'm in bed now. You're calling uh, call later, earlier. I, would, I did this. You did not answer good night, though. Send a pic, then question my question. Right? Like a pic of you. Why do you want to see a picture of me? Because you're hot, okay? So I, like, at this point, I think she's 22 or... She's 18, 19, whatever, but I, I, in my head, I think she's 22. Exactly. Based on his previous experience, she's over the age. All good. But I mean, that is an easy trap to fall in. What if she's not over 18? What if that's not a trap? What if that's an actual bait? 
but how about just just the underlying bare minimum line how about you don't be thirsty in fucking discord broski we've got internet for that shit that is even a song internet is for corn you know it i know it everyone knows like broski whatever you want is there as long as you're looking for legal stuff you know fuck it even the legal stuff isn't there if you know how to use a uh, fucking vpn the uh, tor browsing shenanigans hacking things basically if you're if you're good at the uh, computers you know Shit. What I mean? I mean, I mean. Stay away from the fucking Discord. While him arriving at the age 22 doesn't make logical sense either. How about asking her age before asking the news like normal people? Uh, yeah, but what if she tells you that she's, uh, 25 when in reality she's 14? What then? You're gonna ask for a fucking ID? Or a passport? What the fuck was that? Chat, am I tweaking or, or did I hear a leak sound? Eh. It's official, Shifu is losing it. As it just randomly appears, there are more inconsistencies. As in the Google Docs, he confirmed her age being- Client makes noises sometimes. Yeah, me too, buddy. Me too. Being 18 years old two times. The first instance, by asking her age, we- See? See? I mean, sure. Exactly what we just talked about. My guy is opening a conversation with how old are you? 18, but she can be fucking lying. That's, that's the sneaky part. What you gonna do? Ask for a fucking ID? You can photoshop that shit. Which she said was 18, and then another time where she asked if he knew her age, which he confirmed to be 18 again. Pans also said that 8 months had passed as the Google Docs span over 2 time periods, but somehow conflating an 8 month time period with 4 years isn't a good defense, as he would say, I don't give two fucks about her and forgot her. A Twitter user by the name of L9FriendlyStyle called him out for the- Ah. Yes. L9 and friendly goes hand in hand. His main inconsistencies were Pants explained further that I assume she was 22, like it's 7 months, you want me to remember your mom's age too. Why should I? She's a random and your mom's a random too. And would've put some underage explicit images. She's 22 or 19, she knows what she's doing. But, but what if you're being jailbaited, my friend? Unwilling participant in the fucking sting operation. What if behind the screen she's not 22, but it's actually Jimmy, who is in his mid-50s, balding, sitting in the basement, Having fun on Discord, pretending to live a different life. And in this life, he is pretending to be 22 year old. I mean, I'm going back to my argument, chat. Stay the fuck away from Discord. But one could only imagine if I forgot was a valid excuse for convicted PDF files. One would also think that a 29 year old male would burn the information that the person they're talking to is 18 years old. What's also interesting is that Ellis and Slurbucker reacted to this drama and went over it. This was initially done because Lindsay had contacted Ellis through DMs and as well asked him to react to the drama personally. As such he did and both Slurbucker and Ellis agreed that Pants was cooked but they noted an interesting possibility that Lindsay was intentionally pedo baiting Panzer Dragon as there were some time discrepancies shown. For instance Slurbucker got a DM DM from her about 24 hours and Ellis received the DM 48 hours before she dropped the tweet and the Google Docs with it. So while she was messaging people on Twitter, she was also responding to Panzer Dragon during the asking for explicit. Oh, okay, makes sense. Now see, this is where the stereotype comes that people who play League of Legends, me included, are not mentally stable. Because exactly what she was doing in this scenario was 3 dub stacking her fucking Ravenous Hunter, Relentless Hunter, Ultimate Hunter. She just needed 5 streamers, you know? So she got pants, she needed 4 more to get fully stacked. In pictures section. But this is just speculation and two things can be true at the same time. She was deliberately trying to bait a PDF when she didn't get anything of value, she exposed him. And two, Pants was acting like a PDF. There is also a counter argument to this as she was really really desperate for his- I assume that is that crazy girl chatting to Pants. Can you follow me on Twitter, famous person? I want it won't let me add you, sir. Help it no work. This now this word sir instantly clicks a thing in my brain that instantly switches the entire fucking narrative to Indian scammer tech support. Dog, I'm not saying that my idea of you being jailbaited by a 50-year-old guy is real, but the moment someone types sir. Your computer has virus. Yeah, that's what I hear. Can you follow me on Twitter, famous person? It won't let me add you. Sir, help. It no work. Thanks for the code. code. I love the dog skin. They're my favorite. I like porcelain skin. 
There's so windy. Free four, one four. Uh, Sir, please follow me. Do not redeem. <laughs> Why did you redeem it? <laughs> Bro, imagine entire career of pants are dragon got fucked by an Indian scammer. Oh, that would be, that would be a thing to go down in history books. This attention, which one can see in screenshots revealed, which makes it hard to think that someone was going through all this effort to intentionally pedo bait Panzer Dragon. And after her Google Docs went viral, she also decided to leave Twitter and also delete her. Well, you burned one SIM card, you create another SIM card. And the end scammer is backhanded again, it's going to be a different name this time. Her account. This final nail to the coffin cemented Panzer Dragon's image and reputation. Not only was his YouTube career seemingly gone into degeneracy by having. Imagine if Indian scammers spoke in an American accent were still cooked. Yeah, this is what bothers me the most. Like, Broski, just go to fucking AI softwares that can instantly replicate the voice in perfect American voice. Like, bro, do you know that voice on, on TikTok that narrates every single Reddit post, every single top 10 list, every single fucking article? The same. American voice. This is the voice I am talking about. I'm a hundred percent sure most of you have heard it before. Straight up for a fact, I know that you know the voice I'm talking about. Like, bro, if you're an Indian scammer, the only thing you need to do is be fast at typing. You're trying to scam some old lady in Florida because her computer has a virus. Just, bro, type in the chat, press play. And the thing will do the thing, you know? Pro tip, if you're an Indian scammer, start using fucking AI. You're welcome. Hey, 5% to me, you know? I mean, I, I gave you the idea. Being an abrasive personality, reaction and without any quality of input, posting low quality content, all reflected by the views of his recent videos, and now also the fact of his misconduct with Lindsay. One can only wonder where it all went wrong. Perhaps laziness befell upon him as staying consistent, but creative can get hard, and maybe motivation also fell after playing the same game for over a decade. And after reaching rank 1, there was no more incentive to keep playing, or no more goals to attain. So, what really comes next after that? For Panzer Dragon, it was stagnation. That ultimately ultimately became a pitfall of degeneracy. Stagnation. Well, true. He chose the easy path without foreseeing that if he walks the easy path, the shit will be his downfall eventually. I mean, if you're doing lazy content day in, day out, sure, in a year or two, you'll make a bag, granted, but after a year or two, you're done. So was it biased? I blanked out for half part. I wouldn't say it was biased. Unironically, I would say this video was straight up pretty good. But Hazmat straight up points out that fact that fans got jailbaited. Sure, fans fucked up, granted. I mean, one could call it a perfect storm. A lot of things went fucking wrong. Anyway, what? Oh, no, not, not, not this. Not this. We, we need to check. Nine hours ago. Three minutes. Farewell. Let's see, let's see the situation in here first of all. You know. Let's see the views. Yeah. Remember when I was saying ten thousand is the average you need to make a decent living daily, bro. Hurts to watch. Not gonna lie. Straight up hurts to fucking watch. When you have almost a mil subs and you're not even pulling five k on average. Straight up hurts to watch. Anyway, farewell. Let's question mark. Let's see. All right, so uh, this is basically going to be an update on what's going to be coming next for the channel. Uh, as you guys know, we've been trying to get to rank one challenger uh, this season. It's been obviously very hard. Um, and like honestly, I've played. I, I have. I, I looked through both my two accounts. I've probably played about. Uh, well, if we go <laughs> Google it right now, one account has eight hundred games. The other. The other one has well if we look right here has 900 games we've played 1700 games this season and the season started like what two months ago like bro this is the reason i'm not playing ranked because if you want to play ranked you have to grind and that shit is beyond exhausting like you either become skilled so skilled that no one is a competition to you who was the the guy that was smurfing on faker i feel like it was dopa either you have the talent to do that and you are one in eight billion either you burn out or you just lose your fucking mind don't believe me check out largest content creators in league scene right now <clears throat> dantas <clears throat> kesha and i dare you to make a fucking argument that they are sane both of them are insane you know it i know it everyone knows it 
That's what happens when you play League for a bit too long. Uh, it's it's really bad. Like, it's just bad on my mental health, right? Um, so that's a lot of games. But it was commitment to getting rank 1. Um, and to be honest, if you look, we actually did get top 10. No duo. Nothing. No duo. No duo queue. Here we abused some cool champs, but hey, a lot of people did use it. And the second thing is, on our two accounts, we did get, um, like this one was 1,000 LP. This one actually did hit 1,000 LP uh, right here. Oh, right here is the 1,000 LP. And yeah, we were top 10. We actually were ranked 9 at one point. Um, but you know, we dropped out. <clears throat> and honestly, I could have stayed top 10 and just said, hey, screw it, I'm going to do content from now on. But I told you guys that I want to get rank 1. Unfortunately, it is insanely hard to do. There's a lot of good players out there. Um, and like, Top t like rank 10 right now, or sorry, rank 1 is literally 1600 Davemon, right? I mean, he is right with what he's talking about that there are a lot of good league players. I mean, that this is the subject that I've been referring to for the past couple of months, well, maybe even years. See, the thing is, the longer we have league, the more players have time to practice and become good. Go back to season 5, season 6, when Insect was doing Insect things. No one, no one in their right mind could do his Lee Sin's insect flash alt war jump kick behind the enemy lines and you are removing the ADC. Now, dog, I see that shit daily uh, fucking bronze and silver. Assuming the uh, enemy team has a Lee Sin, you know? The skill level increased tenfold. So, uh, I already put 1700 games into it and I think it is time to stop. Yes, I could have stayed at like rank 10 cap, like I could have, but I didn't. It was never the goal because I knew I can get like top 10. It doesn't like for me, it doesn't matter. I, but I want to get rank one. But I'm going to be honest, it's impossible. Um, maybe I could with Rek'Sai, but I don't think I have enough mental capacity to do it. So, what I want to tell you guys is what's going to happen with the channel. Um, so, I've learned a lot, like how to play solo queue, all this stuff, right? I've learned so much. Um, so, I want to do educational content. The second thing is smart there we go back to the idea of information education entertainment is i want to do also fun builds um and then uh, yeah just basically like how to play league of legends because even though we kind of didn't get rank one we learned a lot and we also mained a lot of roles we actually okay is also an education <laughs> True, true, true. Learn how to play AD carry. We learned a lot about how to play support. In fact, if we did back to educational content like cookie lol, how fitting. But I mean, I was talking about the content and its delivery to the audience. Shit has to fit into one of the three categories. If it fits more than one, even better. Education, information, entertainment. But see, I'm starting to see a pattern that you brought up. After being exposed as a PDF, so far we have two out of two content creators that are starting to make educational content. Mm -hmm. Although, granted, Cookie was already making educational content before that, so we know. Chat, chat, chat. If at some point you will see me uploading educational content, you'll know why. <laughs> uh you know, support the challenger. I probably could get it easily. AD carry is a little bit hard, but like in my mid, mid lane and top lane are kind of like dying. Wait with PDF learning videos that is not a good idea. What do you mean not a good idea? It's a fucking amazing idea. It's like, I'm pretty sure I'm already going down that road. What's my latest video chat? Latest video. Jackson Annie explained a PDF tutorial. You know? I'm in slash master level, but obviously we can get challenger in the bot lane now. It's literally all about wave management. So yeah, I just want to tell you guys that uh, we are probably going to be shifting content away from the rank one grind into more content and content. Like we want to do content, right? So that's what we're going to be doing. Hopefully you guys uh, continue with this. See what happens with the channel, because I promise there will be good content. And yeah, enjoy your day. Yeah, so we got, we got, we got baited.
we got baited by a title, fucking classic. But yeah, I am curious. Anyway, I'm curious to see how this will play out. Because I don't think we've seen any content creator recover after allegations like that. Guess, guess we'll see, chat. Guess we'll see. Anyway, and that's the video.